So um, Scott went to a tattoo convention in New Orleans. Um, and he said, uh, I've not been to a tattoo convention before. Um, he got tattooed. He said, my tattoo should have taken an hour, but I started feeling lightheaded and queasy. Um, and then he said, uh, a guy came by to say hello to Sean. Um, Sean, who was tattooing him, who was tattooed from head to toe. He was wearing shorts and no shirt, and there wasn't an inch of him that wasn't tattooed, including his face. There was so much it was hard to discern one image or piece from another. He had pus globules tattooed in his armpits that dripped down his arm. He was the freakiest person I'd ever seen, and he and Sean knew each other from going to tattoo conventions. At one point, the guy took his dick out to show Sean a checkerboard he had tattooed on it, and that's when I started feeling untethered. That guy, um, I am 100% certain, is a guy called Matt Gon, um, who went on to cover his whole body in a checkerboard pattern and really made a habit of just showing his dick to people at tattoo conventions. <laughs> um, he came to, he, he was at one of the tattoo conventions I went to in the early 2000s in London and did the same thing to me, showed me his tattoo dick. He had a, also had a really weirdly high-pitched voice. Um, <laughs> it's a very strange experience. Um, and so he says, my wife uh, thought Mr. Checkerboard Dick was a loser. Um we were both relieved when Sean told us he thought the guy was completely nuts and fucked up and not representative of tattoo of the tattoo community. <laughs> I wasn't so sure, but it didn't matter. I wasn't in the tattoo business and didn't see myself going to any conventions. Interestingly enough, as well, Macon has his tongue tattooed. Oh yeah, have you, have you looked him up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> safe, safe search on. He was a he was an early eyeball tattoo client as well. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting guy. Uh, he also claimed to be the most tattooed person in the world, I think, for a while, and wasn't. And and tried. I think did he try to? He might. I, this don't. This don't slight me on this directly, but I think he might have like tried to sue Guinness, or there was a whole drama about whether or not he was the most tattooed person in the world, or something. He was very mm. very odd. Anyway, so that was sort of that was uh, Scott Alderman's introduction to the tattoo community, if you like the tattoo world, like meeting meeting Matt Gonsi, Dick. Um, <laughs> Do you ever see a exactly. dick so interesting you start your own festival? Yeah, right. So um, he, he Autumn has clearly got a kind of, he really kind of places himself in this kind of histrionic way at the, at the center of history. And he, he sort of said, um, he said, I, he said he wanted to, um, what he called like, you know, what he went on to call, try and call Woodstock for the body art generation. Right. He was like, everyone's getting into this shit. Like, I want to, I want to, I want to do a festival. I want to bring it into the, the the mainstream. And he basically says um, in his book, like, he told Sean that he wanted to create this festival. He was going to call it Tattoo the Earth. And then he said, um, I had clarity and purpose for the first time in my life. Right within my within days, I had a twenty-page pitch book detailing my plan and a clear vision. It contained an overview of the festival, industry de- demographics, magazine ads, and celebrity photos featuring tattoos, which is weird because he said there weren't any tattooed celebrities. So, you know, already it was difficult finding uh, ads featuring body art and there were not many celebrities sporting tattoos. My list included Alan Iverson, um, also presumably an Olympic basketball player. Um, uh, you you don't know Alan Iverson? No, I know who he is. I mean, he's a basketball player. I mean, like jokingly, like, he said... Ah. Remember, remember that uh, Alderman said there was no tattooed men in the bar, uh, you know, no, no tattooed people playing in the USA basketball team. Um, actually, Alan Iverson. I'm looking at the rosters. Alan Iverson wasn't in that uh, team, and neither was uh, neither was um, uh, Dennis Rodman. Dennis, Dennis Rodman. So, apologies. Anyway, um, so. Then he says, so he also sort of said, you know, he he came up with this like it wasn't. He said it wasn't just a festival; it was going to be like a new industry. He was like talking about um, uh, doing magazines. He was talking about doing like all kinds of things. And then he says, tattooing was barely above ground, barely in the mainstream. But I was going to change all that. Oh, right. this guy sounds sounds so annoying. So he's been getting tattooed for like a couple of years, been to one tattoo convention, seen Matt Gon's dick, and he's like, right, you know what the tattoo industry needs? Me. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> that's a heavy-hearted sigh. You know, if if we had 
a pound for every person who said they're going to change the world and change tattooing who had no idea about anything about tattooing. I feel like we'd have like five pounds. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, this is also funny enough, I think one, one, again, one of the reasons that I think this is a really indicative moment is like a lot of this stuff that comes later on, you know, including the the, the, the weird tattooing robots, which we're going to do an episode about and, and all this kind of people really trying to turn tattooing into an industry. I mean, it was, wasn't industry, but I mean, in a kind of commercialized way. Um, this is one of the kind of biggest examples of someone from outside the industry for the first time coming in and going, yeah, I'm going to do it. Right. He said, he says in his book as well, my business career had just gone bust and I wanted to do something unusual. something had never been done before the greatest freak show ever, like a giant S and M wood, Woodstock. Or a fest. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, he's, he's got this kind of thing um, and he doesn't really know anything about tattooing, but he knows what he wants it to be um and he knows yeah as i said you know he wants it to be this enormous um not just a festival but but you know a kind of cultural money making machine yeah so and and it's like it's super interesting as well because like in this like leading up to the millennium there was like a whole lot of people who thought that like oh this kind of like social event thing that i'm gonna do is gonna like change the world and i think It is a little bit of the hangover of a combination of stuff like, you know, Woodstock, but also stuff like Band-Aid and everything. It's like, you know, everyone thinks that they are going to leave their mark on the world, their own indelible mark on the world through some sort of festival. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, he doesn't, he talks a bit about his his drug addiction, but I wonder if it's also a symptom of, you know, replay, obviously like a lot of addicts. Um, have a kind of messian- messianism, and they and they use their sobriety um, if they are able to become sober, it, it, uh, you know, as a way to kind of you know do something different, but with as much verve and as much passion as they as they'd done, um, you know, as they they previously put towards drugs. So there's a kind of almost positive version of this. But yeah, he, um, it, I just think it's so it's so indicative that he's sort of. He's clearly like he clearly is excited by tattooing. You know, he's not a young guy um, at this point. Um, I think he must be must be in his thirties at least. But he's clearly like fuck. He just loves tattooing, and tattooing is amazing in this period of time, right? Like Ed Hardy and 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 and, and Rudy and Aitchison and and Dan Higgs and Lau Hardy and every all all these uh, tattooing was really changing at this time, and it had, he was he was kind of you know in the wake of this incredible moment of excitement that I, you know, I said, I remember it cause I was there too. I was also reading modern, modern primitives in the, uh, mid to late nineties. I was also kind of seeing tattoo magazines, um, particularly coming out of America with all this incredible work in it. And, and it was a very vibrant and, and thrilling time. And, and the music, you know, and the music scene was also a big in for me. And so I, I can kind of understand his, his excitement. I get it. Cause I was there at the time as well, but but I wasn't, you know, I was obviously much younger than him. But but he's taken that and sort of almost it's almost sort of it's almost metastasized. Like he's got this absolutely kind of like out of control idea about this enormous enormous set of interconnected projects um, that he's gonna he's gonna create. So um so he doesn't really i said doesn't really know anything about tattooing or know any tattooed people he he knows sean um uh, velasquez because he's been getting tattooed by him he gets tattooed by shotzi um but how's he going to make this happen well as i said he'd, he'd read um modern primitives and was particularly inspired by Lyle Tuttle, original you know rock tattooer to the to the rock star elite and and of course like you know Tuttle had been on the cover of rolling stone in 1970 He'd irritated the hell out of Sailor Jerry because Jerry you know, <laughs> he was more, you know, thought that he was a a showman more than a tattooer. Although, of course, he was an incredible tattoo artist. He did so much for the industry. Started, uh, you know, hosted the first international tattoo convention in Houston. Mm-hmm. 